In this lecture, we're going to talk about all the practicalities on exam day, what to expect and what to bring. So I would recommend you get to the testing center at least 30 minutes before the exam starts. When I have scheduled my exams on the ones that I knew were close, I still left half an hour early. And I went and looked up where's the entrance, where do I get in, how can I park? So you know all that on exam day and you can keep your mind as fresh as possible and eliminate all the frustrations that you don't need on exam day. So when you get to the testing center, you tell them, I'm here for an exam, here's my name. Then you need to show them two forms of ID. We will cover those in a minute. You need to give them your signature and you're gonna have your palm vein scan done. So they scan the veins in your palm. And if at any point during the exam, you need to go to the bathroom or you need to go take a break, or when the exam is done, you're going to have your palm scanned again. Then they're going to take your photo, any hats, scarves, coats, anything you have. You can have those on in the testing room and for the photo. All your personal belongings are left outside in the locked storage. And even though they have that little locked storage, it's not huge. Don't bring a lot of stuff. You can fit your cell phone, your keys, your wallet, whatever else you have with you, but don't bring anything big. Then they're going to briefly explain the process and they're going to take you to your PC. Once they have loaded your exam, you sit down, you click start, then they're going to show you a non-disclosure agreement, NDA, and then they're going to show you how the testing interface works. If you do not finish that in the five minutes you allotted, the exam will end and you will fail. So pay attention to the clock. This is also the five minutes where if you're going to write down any mnemonics, anything you want to remember, you get a erasable whiteboard and you get some markers, write that down in those five minutes, but keep a very close eye on the clock. When you're taking the exam, you have to stay seated the whole time. You can't change computers. If you need to get up and you need to go to the bathroom or you need to get a snack, you raise your hand. The proctor is going to come in and do another hand vein scan. They're going to escort you to the front of the building where the reception is, and you can then either get your snack or go to the bathroom. If you take a break, the exam does not stop. So if you take a 20 minute break, you have 20 minutes less for the exam. Now, that doesn't mean I recommend not taking breaks. If you need a break, take it. Go to the bathroom, go eat some sugar, go drink some caffeine, whatever you need to keep going. Just keep in mind, the longer you spend on the break, the less time you have for the exam. If there's any problem with the exam, with the computer, you do the same thing. You raise your hand and the proctor comes in and helps you. And it's important to know that if you take a break, you're not allowed to leave the building. You have to stay in the building and you can go to the bathroom or get a snack, but that is it. Also understand that the testing environment can be loud. Pearson U has a ton of exams that they administer. Some of them have written responses that could be essays. That could be people sitting typing on a keyboard that clicks every time they type. There could be construction noise outside. I have been in tests where there are people grinding metal right outside the testing center and it was very, very hard to focus. But to help with that, the testing center will provide you with earplugs if you ask them. Now for what you should bring to the test center. You obviously need the two forms of ID. Both of them must not be expired. They must be original documents. They can't be photocopies or faxes. And the primary ID has to have your photo and signature. And the photo has to be firmly affixed to the document. That means that it has to be laminated over. So that could be your ID, your passport, your driver's license. The secondary ID only needs a signature, but it obviously has to have the same name. The primary ID could technically also be military IDs, green cards, resident visas, anything that's issued by the government that has your photo and signature, an employee ID, school ID, and in some cases, credit cards. And then for the secondary ID, that can be your ATM card, your debit card, your credit card, your social security card, and really most forms of ID that's not on the primary list. And then it's important that your first and last name completely match the first and last name used to register. So if your license says Jonathan, then you can't register as John or Johnny or something else. It has to match completely. And if the name doesn't match, then you have to bring proof of a legal name change. So if you, for some reason, change your name, you need to be able to prove that. If you're unable to do that, if the names don't match and you can't prove why that is, you'll be asked to leave and you forfeit your exam fee. So make sure that everything is registered right. In the beginning, I mentioned I would suggest arriving at least 30 minutes before the exam. Now, if you arrive within 15 minutes of your start time, meaning up to 15 minutes late, you may lose your seat. It's completely up to the testing center whether they allow you to take the exam or not. 
They will of course do what they can to accommodate you, but if they cannot, you'll be sent away and you'll lose your exam fee. And if you're more than 15 minutes late, you're a no-show, you lost your exam fee. So be early. If, while doing your exam, you expect there's some sort of fraud or cheating, then you are expected to report that directly to IC Squared. So that's all the practical stuff before the exam or during the exam. Once you have answered all the questions, you click End Exam, you either raise your hand, the proctor gets you, they do the hand vein scan again, and you get taken to the reception. At this point, they're going to give you the unofficial results. And that should either be Congratulations, you passed, or unfortunately, you didn't pass, and then you get a breakdown of the domains where you were below proficient. And the reason I say that it's an unofficial result is that IC Squared does statistical and psychometric analysis on the scores if there's any anomalies on your exam. Outside of the testing from home, I have never heard it be a problem with someone who got their passed or failed changed to the other. Being done in a testing center, I've only ever heard of it staying the same. But regardless, they're going to do those tests. And normally, it can take up to six to eight weeks to get the results. And as I mentioned, outside of the time when IC Squared was testing, if they wanted to let people do the exams from home, I have not heard of irregularities or fraud, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So it is completely at the discretion of IC Squared if they grant you your certification or not if they approve your exam results. And if, for whatever reason, you don't pass your exam, you of course would want to attempt it again. Because your goal hasn't changed, has it? You still want the same things. When you do something that's difficult, you will fail sometimes. You now know what to do next time better, you understand how the system works, so you go right back and you keep studying. You can reschedule your next test 30 days after the first test. Now, if you don't pass that one either, it goes up to 60 days, and then again, if you don't pass that one, it goes up to 90 days. And you can only try the exam four times within a 12-month period. Once that 12-month period has expired, you go back to 30, 60, 90 days. But this is only per certification. You can attempt any other IC squared certification even though you're on hold for another. And with that, we are done with what you should expect in the testing center on testing day and what you need to do after the exam. Thank you for being here and I will see you in the next lecture.